Thank you for joining us today on Living It Up, Making Life Juicy. We are on location with the amazing artist, jewelry maker, metalsmith, Linda Lorcott. Thank you for inviting Thank us you. in here. Wow, this is where you create, yes. and it's such a vibrant space. Um, tell us about tell us about what you're doing. Uh, we're in uh, Chester County, and uh, we're promoting activities that are going on around town and Westchester, Downingtown, all the towns of uh, Chester County. So you are. First of all, I'm wearing some of her work. Just do the Vanna White thing. <laughs> so you're you're featured in a magazine right now, an international magazine. Right. This is it's called Lapidary Journal, Jewelry Artist, and it features um, many things about stones, jewelry making, and there's a lot of metal smithing in this current issue. So this is the. May May June issue of 2018. Five page spread in this magazine, so <laughs> it's very impressive. Well, it's really nice to have the opportunity to to write and and kind of instructive about what I do and share my process with other people. So lots of technique on mm -hmm. um, uh, one specific style. Is that what's going this on? This one here? I this one was one specific uh, technique called fusing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so then the next thing is from uh, what's going on around locally. Right. And that's the Chester County Studio Tour. Yeah, this is Sorry. great. This is a really great opportunity for artists to share with uh, the rest of the county. And the county can drive to whatever location they want. So this nice booklet has a map in it. It has the locations of the studios. You can look up the artists. You can plan your route. It's kind of like Chester County Day, where we visit the houses. Now you're visiting the studios, and Lovely. some some are giving demos where they are, and we're actually um, uh, in in a studio that's local. So um, it's really nice. Mm -hmm. What studio? I will be in the Mikana Studio, which is on Bonsville Road, and his name is Paul Uberty. He's a woodworker. It's in an old mill, and. Fabulous. Yeah, so he has um, like shaker furniture, live edge wood furniture, and then another uh, painting artist and I are sharing this, the carriage house on his property. Oh, lovely, yeah, lovely. Fabulous. And that's May 19th and 20th. Great. Mm -hmm. So you also do First Fridays. Yes. In mm -hmm. Westchester. Right, right. I'm in the gallery, The Five Senses, and um, she's uh, open every First Friday and has a nice event there. And this one, a lot of times in the month of this studio tour, because she is a promoter of the tour, she will feature a lot of the artists that do participate in the studio tour. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Lovely. And that's in Westchester. Um, and uh, let's see. Talk about... Uh, you have some interesting takes. Oh, you, you, you're also teaching a, uh, at a museum, right? Right. It's coming up. Right. And that's in October. That's at the Delaware Art Museum, and it's sponsored by Pennsylvania Society of Goldsmiths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's big. <laughs> <laughs> it's so exciting that you're so local and you're like just all over the place. It's great. Um, tell us about the creative process, because this is really important to you. Of the room casting or to... Or just in general. Just in general. Yeah. For your jewelry making. Okay. So for my jewelry making, I took a lot of workshops to begin with, and I... I really admired those people's work, but I, it is ethical, and it was my desire to make my own, create my own statement with my own pieces. So I like to explore the possibilities of the material and the technique within my own studio. So that's why you see I have this whole, mm -hmm. whole spread here, so I'm right. able to do that. And um, the, the process can be more like play. So when you're willing and open, to explore what something will do. Just as if you were cooking. What if I add this spice? What if I add this? What mm -hmm. if I try this? What if I lower the temperature? What if I increase the temperature? You know, what will the result be? And when you're willing to play with that and kind of watch how that works, and it doesn't work because you want to take note of the things that don't yeah, work, right. <laughs> and, um, and then see what you come up with. And a lot of times it can be a very, very unique piece. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, 
uh, let's see, you were talking the other day about um, uh, the elements involved right. with creativity right. and especially with jewelry making mm -hmm. and especially with, well, later on we'll get back here and we'll see her in her process, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which I'm excited about. Um, about the elements right. that you use, so right. Well, they're all they're all included in the process. So, um, you know, earth. And my stones come from the earth. The core of silver comes from the earth. Um, all of that comes from the earth. So I use water in my in some of my processes mm -hmm. with with uh, water casting and broom casting. And we also use water to quench things, to cool things down. We use fire. So if you're gonna have fire, you know, the water really helps. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. And the air is sometimes you can use that actually as cooling, or you can actually add air to your torches and get a different huh. uh, flame temperature and, and that type of thing. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah. then spirit, of course. Right. Because that's, that's where it comes from. Yeah. It comes from you, your spirit. You're sharing your spirit when you're creating these, these pieces that are totally unique to you. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit more about... Uh, the arts going on in Chester County. The little oh, yeah. booklet. This little booklet. Yeah. Okay. What what all goes on there? <laughs> what all goes on here is this year I think we have 154 artists. Is this annually? For this is annually. Okay. It's it's the it's the annual event, and uh, Jeff Schaller has uh, done a really nice job of establishing uh, establishing a whole. Um, organization process to help the artists promote. We have uh, unique pieces that we put out for sale. If you want to participate, you don't have to. We call them collector pieces. Mm -hmm. And maybe you like an artist who's got, you know, a six foot painting that's thousands of dollars and that's not in your price range. Yeah. So we come up with a piece that is comparable for at least $75. So it's, you can paint it within uh, a frame that he provides. In my case, I just make a piece of jewelry. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I established one this year, that I established, created one this year that is it's worth well more than the 75, <laughs> but it's a really unique piece and I really wanted people to see what I've been working on. It's not just, you know, a small piece of what I do. It's actually a pretty nice piece. Lovely. Yeah. Do we get a little teaser here? Or well, no? actually, yes. It's right behind you in that velvet box. <gasps> <laughs> Who doesn't? What girl does not love a velvet box? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Be still my heart. All right. Just tenderly moving everything. <laughs> so this is an amethyst geode. Oh, my goodness. I'm adjusting um, the class right now, so that's all. Wow. wow. So this, to me, it looks like maybe a butterfly, uh -huh. maybe wings of an angel. You can have all kinds of interpretations for these. I tried to match these sapphires as well as I could, but, you know, a lot of times with purples, sapphires. they really... They, <laughs> I know. teary-eyed. They oh blend. God, it's so beautiful. And then there's accented with the pearl. And I am using a lot of beaded wire now as accents, so I'm really enjoying that. And then the chain at the bottom, that's a nice little hanging element. And these are tourmalines crystals that are on here, oh little tourmaline my beads. God. So this, that this is project gorgeous. was... So I've handmade the chain, and you'll be able to double it up in length. Oh. So if you wanted to wear it shorter or longer, it's, that's a possibility. Oh, it's gorgeous. And where will you be... This will be oh, at the Makana, the Makana studio. So I will take this piece with me okay. for the for and show showcase it as my collector piece. And they'll all be on six by six frames, which I'll have a, probably just just laying on the six by six frame, and people uh -huh. can just look for that. Anybody has a six by six frame, is that's their collector piece that's in the shower. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. That is gorgeous. So one of the things it reminded me of was um, a rosary. When I put the chain together, Absolutely. I said it looks like a rosary, and it reminded me too that a lot of a lot of jewelry does go back to it has some kind of emotional impact with people. They mm -hmm. love it, or it's got a connection to a, a celebration or their faith. And you know, mala beads are used for prayer, rosaries are used mm -hmm. for prayer, and so this kind of reminded me of a little angel and rosary. So that's uh -huh. why I was trying to say it was kind of a you know 
kind of spiritual thing sometimes comes through. Yeah. And also, too, I do say that it is a spiritual practice because there are miracles that happen on my bench all the time. Some of the techniques that I learned, I go, that shouldn't have happened. And it did. And I am wow. so grateful. And I go, something worked. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you were saying the other day about um, sometimes people, when you're uh, showing, go ahead, you can, uh -huh. when uh, you're showing pieces, um, sometimes people will like come from across the street. Yes, that has happened just like, before. Oh my God, tell me about that. That will uh, sometimes it's just the way the piece looks, or they like how it feels. And I don't know what drew her, but she said I looked over and saw this, and she and she said she made a beeline right over to my booth, and she she goes I have to have this, and she just knew by sight. Some people like to feel it, see how it feels mm -hmm. in their skin, get yeah. a sense of, you know, um, either the stone or the the softness or the look of it, and, um, you know, she just knew immediately, and I was going, wow, you know, she had love at first sight with my jewelry, yeah, I was going, wow, this great. is great, yeah, that's yeah. great, yeah, so do I, <laughs> <laughs> hint, hint, <laughs> um, so let's get into the, talk about the broom casting, which is what she's done here, right, so, so the broom casting is a technique that I'm working, uh, teaching in October, and you can you can pretty much melt. I'm just melting silver over a broom. Is all I'm doing. There's literally a broom involved. There is literally a broom involved. And oh, it hence will, the October and the Halloween. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. let's have a broom burning in October. It'll be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> God forbid a broom actually burns. Or is that what you do? I don't know. What do you do? You well, set a broom on fire. Well, it, it actually <laughs> what happens is. That One you, way to get across the tire. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the turbo, it's the turbo broom. Yeah. <laughs> so we're using the bristles, and I actually have found that the older brooms that are really worn down have been in the garage. Somebody's garage. They're the best ones. Wow. Yeah. So you get them wet, and then you find a way to um, hold it so that you can actually pour molten silver over it. So once you do that, and there's all different ways to do it, and I have a couple processes that I'm going to share at the, at the class. Good. And, um, but you can do it in, outside in your backyard. Um, I do it here with my exhaust fan, and that's where I will quench it very quickly with the water. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you pour the, the molten metal, you take the torch off and, and pour it in very quickly. It's cooling as it's pouring. So what it does okay. is it goes down those... The, it burns and goes down the straw, the, mm -hmm. bur the broom straw. And that's where you get all these, you know, really these like icicle looking Great. gyrations. And then sometimes you don't know what happens. So then you have to take it over and spread out some newspaper or something and then un untwine it. And it's like a little treasure hunt. So you go, oh, look at this one. Oh, look at this wow. one. And you get some very large pieces. If you're melting a lot and you have enough heat to uh -huh. do that, you can get a very large piece. And sometimes you get really small pieces. And like your earrings, those were two small pieces and everybody really liked that size. So I said, let me put them on the jump ring and just mm -hmm. attach them to something to give it a, a little more stability for the... Yeah. Because it's not... They're the perfect size. Yeah, it's a nice size. For yeah. day wear and into right. evening. So. Right, right. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so we're gonna. What are you gonna show us at your? Tell us about that. What are you gonna show us at your bench? Okay. So like on your, your earrings, I have what we call a jump ring, and you can make those in different sizes. And jump rings are basically just a unit, like a unit of a chain. And when you link them all together, then you have a chain. So I thought I'd show you how I do that, and you know we can solder one together. And like the ones I have here, I've done a little something a little bit different on them. Okay. So I can demo that, that process. Pretty. Very pretty. Okay. Um, what else do you want to share with us? It's so fun. <laughs> it's just so fun. This is like, besides my kids, this is my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> and it's go. never too late. Like, don't even think that it's too late because I had all my kids first, then went to college, and then I just got into jewelry wow. making. So, you know, I mean, I knew I would like jewelry making right before I went to, back to college, and I just go, okay, I'm going to be back to that. But for me, I mean, once I started talking about it, like with my family, I found out that my great-grandparents had a jewelry store in New York City. And a half-uncle was the wow. metalsmith, and then my dad worked on bridges, and my other uncle was... Um, a machinist, and I'm just kind of a little 
melting pot of all those things, yeah. they kind of all landed here. So. so working with metals goes, is like in your DNA. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, and it's fun just to create, which I've always liked to create from, you know, way back when we did macrame and tie-dye and, you know, all of those <laughs> camp things, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I what's interesting is that my grandmother uh, used to dabble uh -huh. with silver making, but not nothing at your caliber at all. And she had done I don't even know where they are, but she this reminds me so much oh, of really? her. Yeah. Well, maybe she did so that. She, that technique is really that. old. Yeah. I know she did some things like this, but nothing like your, you know, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> your work. <laughs> so, so come out on, uh, when is it, May? May 19th and 20th. This is the Chester County Studio Tour. Good. And mm -hmm. you're going to be where? I'm going to be at um, McCona Studio, which is at 930 Bo Bronzeville Road in Thorndale. Good. And mm -hmm. um, and also I'll be at the first Friday, so, uh, several first Fridays I go to. So um, it and that's at the Five Senses and Gal the Gallery in Westchester. Right in Westchester. Yeah, I've even done some demos there when when they had a first Friday. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, all right. So from here we're gonna move on and uh, set up at her table behind us, and uh, stay tuned. Some optimizers to give us extra close up vision so we can see on the tiny things. So, what I've got here is a piece of 18 gauge wire that I'm, I've drilled holes into this dowel and I'm going to wrap it very tightly toward the end. So, the hole goes all the way through so that I could actually stick the end of the wire in there because it is going to spring back. And then once I have as much as I want, I'm going to still hold it as tightly as I can. And then clip the end off. And because I have put a piece through the other side here, I can just clip this end. If it clips all the way through. There we go. And then slide it off. So it becomes like a like a spring. And then I will clip as much as I can. This that stayed pretty good to form because I got it pretty tight and held it that way. And I'm going to clip one of these at a time. And each one will be its own own jump ring. And if you can, you can go all the way through. You want to keep the cutting to a minimum because you don't want to have too many marks in your silver. So then I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to do it with my fingers because it's pretty soft right now. And then we file it so that each end is flush. And you'll be able to wiggle it back and forth until you see that the ends will be flush together. And these are Swiss files number two cut Needles, needle size. So they're not really big hand files. And once you see that there's no space there, this is why I have the extra vision here so that I can see all of that. And I kind of like to do it a little bit on an angle, especially on a curve. I have to switch it back and forth and just try and pay attention to which side you're working on. file where one was already already done. So now that it's been filed, it's really clean. And clean is what's really important when you're going to solder. So I'm going to solder this closed and I'm just moving each end back and forth so that those ends touch. And now I'm going to take it to the soldering station.
So it's pretty important not to touch your metal with your fingers where you're going to solder. So in solder, uh, it is we have a couple different a couple different um, melting temperatures. So you want to start with hard solder, which has a higher melting temperature. That way you can solder pieces on later with medium and easy so that you can put a couple of soldering joints on one piece. And the first one won't melt because it takes higher temperature. So this solder that I have is hard solder. And I've already sanded it and fluxed it. And flux helps prevent fire scale from building up because there is oxidation that will occur when you add the flame. So what I'm going to do is place this piece of solder on this charcoal block right underneath where I want the where, where I want it to solder together. And I have a small torch tip here. I use a, an acetylene ambient air system. And this is a small torch tip, which I like to use for smaller pieces. See the small, smaller flame is going to keep my, keep my flame right where I want it. And what I'm going to do is circle around where I want the piece to be soldered. And the solder is going to work by capillary action. and the heat will draw it up into that opening. Did you see it? Wow. And then we quench it. And then we clean it in an acid wash. So we use copper tongs to what? put it in an acid wash and that I keep in here. Basically I use pool cleaning chemical or something that you put in your hot tub to keep the... Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. And heat it up in the crock pot, and then let it let it work itself. Awesome. So that takes a few minutes. So once that's done, in order to get this, the piece that I have in my earring, <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm, going, I'm going to forge it. Okay. So I have a piece here that's already been soldered, and it uh, needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'm just going to demo the okay. forging. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Here, I have one right here. And forging is basically changing the shape of the metal. So I have oh. a steel block, mm -hmm. and I will just use a light tapping of a flat-faced hammer. I love my hammers. These are awesome. They are like beautiful piece of art in themselves. So I'm going to hold this down, and I'm going to forge that round wire flat. And this pencil eraser is really just keeping it from popping all over the, the steel right. plate. Generally when you're forging you're, you're supposed to count how many hammer blows you have. I did not this time. <laughs> I'm just going for a look. Okay. If it all fits on the hammer face, you can go straight down on it. You might want to flip it over and then do the same thing. Just lower down and even. So you can see oh, yeah. how the piece got flattened. And it just gives it a little, another dimension. Yeah, beautiful. Really beautiful. So you shape it, you solder it first, shape it, and then forge it. You wouldn't want to solder after, you know, in this process, in this particular piece, those steps work the best. Nice. Well, thank you so much. Thank You're you. You're welcome. All right. Here we are, living it up, making life juicy with Linda Luca. <laughs> thank you. And me, Ingrid. <laughs>